Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Middle Georgia Speedway here in Macon, Georgia, for the next race on the Arkansas Elite Series schedule. Noah Hart and Russ Pliskin are on the front row here. As we go a little further back, you can see that there are a number of drivers on this old yet new racing facility. Arkansas has never been here before, but we are looking forward to a wonderful showdown here of uh, Bront and Guts here for the eighth race of the season. And this should be a very interesting race going forward. Let's take a look at your starting grid. Allison Holiday and um, Austin Silverspoon will be on the back row of the grid today as we go up the order. We also have Zayn Davidson and Caitlin Tannerhill on the back row. Not a great day for the Mid-Atlantic cars in qualifying. Sean R. did very poorly uh, in qualifying. He was our point leader today. Um, or was the point leader last weekend, that is. Didn't uh, make it that far. Uh, did not hold that point lead with Austin Sanders, who finished second uh, last week in the next spot on the grid. Cody Lamas didn't qualify well, needs to perform better. Result Dormitory up back in the grid as well with Ty Silverspoon and uh, Bobby Jones there as well. The first of the blameless car, or the second of the blameless cars being Kai Dry and, eight, and Eric Monaco toward the back of the grid as well. Dylan Speeds and uh, Daniel Bouchard are there as well. The Canadian doing the best he can. Chester Lester Wester and DJ Curtis on the grid there as well. Not a great day for the Fords. Ayapo and Selmy and uh, that would be Miko Miyasaki there on the grid as well with Aiden Shepard and that would be Lance Calvin on the grid there. Pip Longstocking and Sevar Ilkin on the grid in that row with finally Zachary Fitzwater isn't qualifying in the bottom 30 or bottom 10 or 12 there. And you've got alongside Anthony Griffith. You've got both the Matthews Motorsports Espiras on a row together. And you've got uh, Hirano and Abbott on the grid with Bethany Woodard and uh, Ryan Griffin side by side as well with Ethan Kiderman and Tyler Faber. Now we go up to the front stretch of the grid being uh, Gretchen Faust and Ethan Moore with Nick Pericles and Sean Perkins alongside each other, Rich Roy and Ingrid Hadeland, Greg Woodard, last week's winner, and Vince Fries. And then finally, you have Noah Hart, a Georgia boy at heart, and uh, Russ Bliskin on the front row. Middle Georgia Raceway, a medium-banked uh, short track here. Just over a half mile is the site of the eighth round of the Arkansas Elite Series schedule. Here we go, green flag is out. Down into turn one here, as you can see, it is a very um, strangely progressively banked track here. Gotta be oh so careful you're not getting into too much trouble here. Down towards turn number three and four. You see now Vince Freeze now is closing in now on Noah Hart there, but not gonna get any moves on Ingrid Hadland into third position. Oh, we got a car on the wall, that is of Pip Longstocking, no caution for that though. Hadland gets by Vince Freeze there, and we're gonna go back and see what happened to Longstocking. Four wide is not a good idea around this track, and Longstocking just gets in the wall. Doesn't spin out, so they don't need a yellow, but not a great day for uh, Pip Longstocking. Hadland makes a move from way far back to take over the lead here on lap three, and Ingrid Hadland with Sean Perkins now following in second position, now trying to take over the lead of this race. There they go into the lead there. Perkins into second. So Ingrid Hadland, the queen of, of European stock car racing now, is doing her best to hold off some of these drivers a little further back. Vince Freeze now slotting into third position, or fourth position rather. Our point leader Gretchen Faust is down in 26th position, not doing very well here on the Middle Georgia Raceway. Oh, we got Miyazaki all over the road. Save it, save it, save it. Just door check Sanders there a little bit. Oh, that could have been really bad there. Luckily, it wasn't. But the Middle Georgia Raceway is proving to be a pretty decent track, though, as uh, it's a nice little curveball because it is not. It's a very one group track. Oh, Hirano also with issues there as well. Uh, almost losing it there. Uh, that's Faust's teammate, Takumi Hirano. Doing a decent job, though, just trying to hold off. Uh, Carter Fitzgerald there, Hirano's got a very quick car. Road Atlanta winner, Sean Perkins now. One of the two winners in a Georgia race now. 
is taking over the lead of the race from Ingrid Adeline. Perkins is a really strong car right now, and that could be something to watch as we keep going in this event. Bethany Woodard and Ryan Matthews now are taking over third and fourth from Noah Hart. These two drivers are on, on a mission here, and also here comes Greg Woodard up the order as well. Last week's winner is flying through this field very quickly. We're only on lap 11 now, and he has gained a ton of spots here as Noah Hart, a hometown hero, is falling back quite quickly. Ryan Matthews is in the fence there by off of Caitlin Abbott's uh, front bumper there. Uh, I was just going to say how Matthews has fallen back just a little bit there. He was running in fifth, but Abbott just essentially gives him the bumper and forces him into the wall there. I'm sure Ryan Matthews isn't going to be happy, and now he's down to 11th, and that just shows how far Noah Hart has fallen since the start of this race. Down, fighting for 11th, and it's only 17 laps into the race. As now you've got uh, DJ Curtis. Oh, Ryan Matthews is all over the road now. And that was Caitlin Abbott there. Oh dear, that could have been fun. So Abbott's on the outside here, loses a bunch of spots here on the outside. And you can see Ryan Matthews is not happy with Abbott here. Matthews gets him deep and tries to essentially turn her, but nearly turns himself in the process. So, oh, the anger is already starting here at Middle Georgia Raceway. What a great showing here, and we got a yellow flag. And that is Ilkin, oh, Sean Ard, one of the major championship contenders, and our race leader, Sean Perkins, is involved in the Team Thunder car. So Sevar Ilkin gets into Miyasaki here, down the track to go into Tanner Hill, around they all go. And oh, that's where Ilkin and Holiday get contact. Sean Ard goes around, and then right here is where Sean Perkins, the race leader, gets into it as well there, and oh, dear. Hadeland does a good job slowing down. Woodard's actually going to get second out of that because Hadeland was very um, cautious with that there. But uh, Hadeland played that smart, I think. The green flag would fly again with uh, Greg Woodard in the lead, the Homestead winner now in the lead. As Woodard now is, uh, there is some hold up here behind Sevar Ilkin. That being Nick Pericles up in the second now. And Hadeland is in third here on lap 25. Uh, also, great showing by Anthony Griffith. Oh, Holiday's in the wall, and that's gonna probably be another yellow flag there. But luckily, I think it's just Allison Holiday there involved in that incident. We'll go back and take a look and see what happened to Holiday there and see if there's anything that needs to be uh, sorted out there. Yeah, here's what happened to Allison Holiday. Yeah, Bethany Woodard just gets, uh, again, four wide on a short track. Not a great idea there. And Holiday just kind of gets put in the wall because of it. So now you got the two uh, mid-Atlantic racing cars and an MDR of Sevar Ilkin on the inside car line. One lap down is Greg Woodard, the Homestead winner. Uh, continues to lead this race now as, oh, there's Nick Pericles in second. But Pericles is struggling trying to get by some of these lap cars here. Oh, uh, looks like Ryan Griff, Ryan Matthews is doing well, but Anthony Griffith and, oh, this could be bad. This could be really bad. We got cars is stacking up now. And that's a big incident here, and we got another problem there with some of these drivers. Not good there. That's uh, Ingrid Hadeland with a lot of damage. Cody Lamas, Zachary Fitzwater. Big incident there. Aiden Shepard. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Noah Hart or Full Sitters in that. Oh, Hart turns Lester Wester there. Kind of uh, silly there. And this is caught up. Oh, Griffin just, Griffin just slides up there. And well, Hadeland gets involved. Faber uh, is there. Oh man, I saw Monaco go flying into the wall there. And everybody just starts stacking up as per normal on these short tracks. There's not a lot of place to go. Oh, Gretchen Faust, the point leader's got problems now. Oh dear, that could be big. Yep, here it is again from the helicopter cam, and around they go, just in front of this entire field here, and just, here you go, you start stacking up now. And uh, I see Dormitory and Silver Spoon and Sanders did a good job slowing down there, but nobody else really did. So Greg Woodard here at uh, Middle Georgia Raceway continues to lead here. Uh, I was gonna say something about Ryan Matthews last time around, uh, had the inside line really going there, but with Hadeland and uh, Griffiths essentially taking each other out, Matthews has inherited up to third. 
Uh, his best friend, Carol Abbott's right behind him. Woodard leads on the restart here. And I have a feeling a lot of these lap cars, Ilkin's been a problem in a lot of these restarts. Here we go once again here. Tyler Faber has no hood, but damage really doesn't matter around these short tracks. And we, hey, we finally get a lap in, I think. As, oh, we got cars just scrambling further back, trying to uh, see who has to pit and who doesn't. Oh, we got uh, somebody in the wall back there. That's one of the blameless cars. That's Lester Wester in the wall there. And uh, Tanner Hill is a lap down, but uh, has cleared this pack here. Uh, also, Faber is a lap down as well. As now we got Kiderman up into second position. And now it's his job to chase down uh, Greg Woodard. Bethany Water is up into third. And now you got finally Rich Roy up into fourth. And it, wow, Carter Fitzgerald really got through that pack as well there. Fitzgerald did a pretty good job here. Once you start spreading out, the racing tends to be pretty good around this track, but it can kind of get silly midway through it, if you know what I mean. And now they are really duking it out here as Greg Woodard, as you can see, has an absolutely massive lead right now. Oh, but we got a yellow flag. What happened here? And that's Bobby Jones and one of the Menervinis up there. It looked like dormitory. And Jones slides up, trying to keep it under control, but dormitory just happened to be there, and that's where Lester Wester gets involved. And oh, it looks like Ty Silverspoon also re-spins out uh, dormitory there. Oh, we got some chicanery going on on the backstretch here, and oh, that's not gonna end well for Holiday and Roy. I think Roy was trying to get onto the pit road there. Holiday didn't let him, and I don't know what Rich Roy is doing. I think we're just gonna stay here there. Woodard's got the lead right now. I don't think this is gonna end well for some people. Oh, well, Rich Roy does get to the inside pretty easily there, I think. Oh, but maybe not. Rich Roy is holding up the entire inside line here. Maybe that'll actually make this actually go longer in a few laps. No, it won't. There's an accident in front. Involving Holiday, Puck, Ilkin, Titerman, and Ryan Matthews is in it. But the race, with how this race is going, there's more eliminations in it than in a game of Fall Guys, but... Yep, that's another yellow flag. So Kiderman restarted second here in Holiday and, oh, Holiday and Ilkin. It's lap cars being stupid today. Well, I think Ilkin's going to get the uh, reject of the day, I think, but, and, oh, Ryan Griffin had nowhere to go, really. Nowhere at all to go. 100 laps of chaos, this is. And this race started off so cleanly, and then it just kind of went out the window once we got to the midway point of the race. We are now on lap 52 of 100. And this race is very, 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 very chaotic right now. And uh, hopefully we can calm it down a little bit here. Greg Woodard and Bethany Woodard are the bread in a DJ Curtis sandwich there in the middle there, or actually DJ Curtis is in the middle of a Woodard sandwich there. Green flag is out again here and away we go. Allison Holiday is another one trying to go for reject of the day today. And oh, bad start by DJ Curtis. Bethany Woodard also uh, nearly got collected in that. DJ Curtis had a really poor start there. Nick Pericles gets by Chester Lester Wester and lap cars in general have just been a nightmare today. I saw one of the uh, Menervinis of Dormitory getting into the wall there. And now you got Ethan Moore trying to get a lap back from Woodard. This isn't what Greg Woodard wanted, but Bethany Woodard now is slotting into solidly second place and now has to chase down her brother. But green flag still stays out. It's been a decent restart so far, but oh dear, up here, this isn't what we want to see. We've got Tyler Faber being a slow back marker right now. And it's just kind of like a rush hour trap. It looks like an Atlanta rush hour around here. And, uh, well, it's kind of chaotic, isn't it? Just very chaotic. Oh, Holiday and Shepard in the wall. And luckily, Shepard is smart enough to know that Allison Holiday's been in a couple of wrecks today, some of which caused by her own stupidity. And it's good to let her just kind of do her own thing. And we got some three wide sh 
chicanery going on back here. There goes Lance Calvin and Caitlin Tanner into the wall. Oh, we got Shepard around! <laughs> I was just singing the praises of Shepard there for being smart. And Holiday, I think, is in her six different accents of the day. And here it is. It's three wide in front here, and this is where I thought the accident would take place, but it didn't here. Well, it eventually did. Lance, Kelvin, and Shepard. Shepard was sliding up there, and Kelvin was kind of there, but Kelvin stayed in it, and around they went. And this is, again, another angle of it. Just around they go, and there's just cars everywhere at that point. Ty Silverspoon in it, both the Bradleys in it. They're second, I think, in the uh, constructor. They're pretty high in the constructor standings, and yeah, well, Bradley not going to come out of here looking too strong, I think. So Greg Woodard hit it on this caution along with DJ Curtis. So now the top of the order is Nick Pericles, Carter Fitzgerald, Rich Roy, and then you've got Woodard and Curtis there with Abbott as well. So again, this race is very, very, um, to say the least, gotten, gone to a race of survival, to be honest with you, as here comes some of the lap cars down low. Problem for Nick Pericles is that he's stuck behind Austin Sanders, who's on the tail end of the lead lap, so this restart could be a bit of a problem for him. So Pericles leads on the restart, and off they go down in towards turn number one, and it's just going to be a battle of who can get going here. And oh, Pericles doesn't really get going. It looks like Fitzgerald was gonna look underneath there, but didn't, thought better of it. Fitzgerald now might get a shot here. Shocked it's still green. Oh, Holiday nearly takes out the leader. So Holiday is another uh, champion for reject of the race, it looks like. Another um, contender, at least, for it. And here comes Bethany Woodard back to the inside to try and chase down Pericles. So, per so Bethany Woodard's up to fourth here. Pericles has lost the lead of Rich Roy. And, ah, oh, Greg Woodard with problems. I saw Woodard on pit road. Greg Woodard might have a tire going down. Yes, he did. And he is now coming off of pit road. Not good for Greg Woodard there. But right now, it is Rich Roy in the lead with DJ Curtis in second, Nick Pericles in third, Bethany Woodard fourth, Abbott fifth, and Carter Fitzgerald sixth. Oh, Davidson! Save yourself! No, they don't! Monaco and Griffin involved as well. Davidson falls out. I think now we might be talking about Anthony Griffith possibly being reject of the day as he turns Davidson down low. That's like the second or third accident he's been involved in. And Davidson tries to hold on to it, but there just wasn't a hole to slide back up in. And Davidson's out of the race because of it. Rich Roy will lead on the restart here as they're coming out of turn two. It started off as a really good race, and the racing has been strong here. It's just been a lot of accidents so far today, and uh, that's kind of been a uh, unfortunate byproduct of the good racing that we've been seeing throughout the day. It is a very competitive little track here in Macon, Georgia. But here we go, Rich Roy back takes the green here, and we've got DJ Curtis in second position there. Here we go, down into turn number one here. Roy is up in the fence on the restart here, and Abbott and Curtis are three wide with them in the lead. We got Pericles around in the back. Let's hold on to it, please. Yes, he does. And it looks like Abbott's gonna take over the lead, but here comes DJ Curtis now. Curtis was gonna try and slide underneath Abbott. Didn't gonna make that work. Not gonna make that work there. And now, We've got crazier racing a little further back. We're losing cars left and right, so I'm kind of surprised how um, no one's really, uh, well, falling out, or that we're still seeing this be such a big wreck fest there. Abbott's letting Sanders go. Abbott's a major championship contender here. Oh, but there's a yellow with uh, up one of the loser cars uh, goes around. Up, oh, I'm sorry, Blaine's cars goes around. And, well, that's another yellow. 
And this one is, uh, well, a lot of cars in one spot here, and really, oh yeah, there's a lot of debris out there, so they do have to throw a yellow for that. Chester Lester Western just gets turned. Abbott will lead on the restart here, as Rich Roy kind of threw away a lead there with uh, under 20 to go in this race. Down to turn number one, they go Abbott does not get going. Abbott's got problems with that car. Abbott's got all kinds of trouble. Looks like a tire going down for Caitlin Abbott, or Carol Abbott. Who is the leader now in this race? Is it DJ Curtis maybe, or? Yes it is, all those lap cars got their laps back. And DJ Curtis is the leader. So here we go. And the lap car, the lead lap cars now are the ones that are duking it out amongst themselves, so. Here we go, Carol Abbott's Tesla broke down, probably with some battery issues. They've been having that, Keitervin's in second. He's been involved in a couple of wrecks, though. Lester Wester is all over the track. Another reject of the race contender for Chester Lester Wester. Are they still green? No, they're not. I kind of figured they weren't with how they were racing. I think I saw, I don't know what happened. We'll see. Rich Roy would get turned off the bumper of Carter Fitzgerald here, and around goes Roy, and well, more trouble for uh, the left cars, I guess. So Ethan Moore in that war wagon, the Texas World winner, did not pick. DJ Curtis did. Everybody further back did pick. And I think track position does matter here. I mean, there's only 20 cars left in this race, basically. So I think we're in the final leg of this uh, race, I would say. Maybe it's time for a little bit of a music change then. And the background theme, let's hit this. All right, here we go. This is going to be the final leg of this race. Here we go, green flag is out and away we go. And now Ethan Moore does get a good restart there. Uh, DJ Curtis trying to make the outside work, not making it work there. The last cars are trying to get by. There's Chester Lester Wester down there. The 78 9 car. I'm sorry, 79 car. Oh, we got Fitzgerald and Pericles duking it out there. They're not too happy with one another. And Pericles is going to pay the price of it. Tanner Hill slides up the track. We got Tanner Hill around. There's Speeds around. Woodard. Griffith in his eighth different accident. He has sock or dormitory and silver spoon in it. So we got another caution out in this race. Ethan Moore is leading this race with only a handful of laps to go. Five or four to go now in this event. And here we go. It will be five to go on the restart. And Moore might be the luckiest man alive, just making sure that he doesn't get in here. But Eric Monaco, the lap car, is fighting him. Carter Fitzgerald's trying to get underneath uh, Vince Freeze there. And if this stays green, because if, if there's a caution, this race is over. Carter Fitzgerald is moving through the field here very quickly. Monaco goes underneath more, oh, more there. Carter Fitzgerald now is becoming a factor. We got cars all over the place on the back stretch, but I think they're trying to keep it green. Yes. A dormitory is around here. Three laps to go, and Carter Fitzgerald has caught Ethan Moore. And if there's more accidents, they're not going to be able to keep this race going. Pericles is on pit road. Monaco goes wide. We got Sanders and Roy making contact. This is going absolutely to ham here. But Carter Fitzgerald, with two laps to go, has caught Ethan Moore. And they. Carter might want to make a move because if she doesn't, that could be the end of the race here. We're still green. Final lap of the race for Ethan Moore, who has a vastly inferior car to Carter Fitzgerald. But it doesn't look like Fitzgerald's got a car either. It looks like Fitzgerald's having issues with the track. Ethan Moore, the Texas World winner, is gonna come back with a pitch strategy 
where he didn't pit to win Middle Georgia. Carter Fitzgerald second. Third's gonna go to DJ Curtis. Fourth somehow went to Rich Roy, who I think spun on the last caution, or one of the last cautions. Nick Pericle is fifth. Woodard sixth, Bethany Woodard sixth, Vince Freeze seventh. Let's take a look at your full finishing order. Ethan Moore is the victor today with Carter Fitzgerald second, DJ Curtis third, Rich Roy fourth, Nick Pericles fifth, Austin Sanders sixth, Vince Freeze seventh, Bethany Woodard eighth, I Ethan Kiderman ninth, Greg Woodard tenth, Tyler Faber eleventh, Allison Holiday 12th, 13th goes to Anthony Griffith, 14th goes to Austin Silverspoon, 15th goes to uh, Ryan Griffin, 16th goes to, um, that would be Caitlin Tannerill, 17th goes to Zolt Dormitory, 18th goes to Eth, uh, Eric Monaco, 19th goes to Chester Lester Wester, and on this attrition filled day, 20th on down, didn't finish, Dylan Speed 20th, Carano, Abbott, Davidson, Lawn Stocking, Shepard all don't finish but get points. Kelvin, Jones, uh, Silver Spoon, Matthews, Ilkin, Faust, Hart, Fitzwater, Pliskin, Padalan, Miyasaki, A. Slem, Anselmi, um, Bouchard, Dry, Lamas, Perkins, and Ard all do not finish this event. Let's take a look at your points. So leaving Middle Georgia, we have a tie at the top of the points with Gretchen Faust and Nick Pericles. Uh, Vince Freeze is 20 back with Bethany Woodard and Ethan Moore also in hot contention. Not far back, Greg Woodard down on 239. Terrell Abbott's falling way down from third to seventh. Sean Ard down in eighth. Lance Calvin in ninth and DJ Curtis 10. Tyler Faber, Dylan Speeds, Ryan Griffin, Noah Hart, Ingrid Hadland. Uh, Zayden Davidson, Ryan Matthews, Sean Perkins, and Rich Roy round out. And then Austin Sanders rounds out your top 20. Aiden Shepard, Eric Monaco, Carter Fitzgerald, uh, who finished second. Great job for Fitzgerald, who was looking really stagnant in the points for a while. Daniel Bouchard, Takumi Hirano, they're tied with Caitlin Tannerhill. All three of them uh, with 118 points. Anthony Griffith, one back. Ethan Kiderman with 115. Cody Lamas. Cody Lamas down in 29th position with only 86 points. Coming for a reigning champion, that is one of the worst championship defenses I've ever seen so far from Lamas. Uh, Ace Lemmy, uh, Jones, Holiday, Longstocking, Dormitory, Pliskin, Dry, Ilkin, Miyasaki, um, Silver Spoon, Silver Spoon, Lester Wester, Fitzwater is last in points. The Honda driver, again, another really poor attempt at a uh, championship defense in the first eight races of the season. So while it was a good day for some of the people uh, that were further down the points order, it wasn't a good day for some of the teams that were higher up, as like Foya has 490 points leaving uh, round eight. Toyota jumps up a lot of spots to take over second. Uh, they had a really good race. Nissan is in third. Fourth is the Marlone team. So the top four are all factory operations. So good job by the factory teams. Fifth place is Silver Speed, uh, who is a customer team. The first of the customer teams, even though every team should be a factory team, but they're the first customer owned team, not manufacturer owned team. Tesla, Catalan Sport, Bradley, Ford, Ferrari, Matthews, Dominion Caraway, Thunder, Roy Inc. Uh, Mid-Atlantic, Roy Inc. also jumped up in a lot of spots. Mid-Atlantic, Honda, who, Honda. Yeah, how far has the mighty fallen there? Middle Deutschland, Pass, Menervini, Blameless, and Arkansas America are all on the grid there. As you can see, Arkansas America finally gets some points. They've got 40 points leaving this round. We will see you next time, everybody, as Arkansas will take on a new facility, uh, another new track for the next race. We'll see you then.